so we see over here uh, the Sipuri Maisios, which is the stories of Rabbi Nachman, different stories. And the stories really have secret meanings. And one of the reasons why I like the particular version, although it's not in English, it's just in Hebrew, and I'll do the best I can to translate it, is because it has a pirush that really explains the secrets of the, I think, very well, uh, uh, of these stories. And uh, here is Rabbi Lazar Shlomo Shik, who was a Hasidic rabbi that I learned a lot of Torah from, and uh, really uh, was a great, great tzaddik, this man. And uh, helped me tremendously at a time of, time of stress, and so therefore I, I'm dedicated and devoted to his thinking. Uh, going on with the story, a simple story. King has no children. Makes the Jews find the tzaddik. The tzaddik predicts that he'll have a child, and he does. The child is a, gor a gorgeous girl. At the age of by the age of four, she's accomplished in all the arts and sciences. But it's not enough for him because he realizes that she's going to marry outside. Somebody else is going to come in. So he needs a son. So he goes back to the Jews and he threatens them, basically. He speaks to them nicely that he has them in his hands. And he wants to do good for the Jews, but if they can't produce a, to pray and produce a child for him, a son, uh, could be trouble. So look for the tzaddik who originally gave him the blessing. He's dead. He already passed out of the world. And now they found another tzaddik. And this tzaddik, after a little bit of a threat, came along and said that he will produce a child. And this will be a son. But the son will also be made out of precious gems. So he had the king find all the jewels in the world, all the different jewels, and ground them up into a potion and had the king drink with together with a glass of wine and the same thing with the, uh, with the queen. And sure enough, she became impregnated and she gave birth to a son. The only problem with the son was that he wasn't made out of jewels. Here's a story now. I'll translate as best I can. Babas Malka, that is the the uh, the princess, Rasa Sha'inda Khashuva Kokach, she saw over here that the son was getting all the attention because by the time he was four years old he was also proficient in languages and sciences and arts and everything. She was very jealous about him then. Rak but rather they had one only one thing that could comfort her. Because that tzaddik had said, that he'd be completely and totally made out of beautiful stone. So she says, well, the good thing about this was that he's not made out of precious stone. There was one time that the kip the prince was cutting wood. The Nika beds bow and he cut a little bit, he stabbed he, his his finger. The Ratsas of the Bas Malko, the Khrokas is bow, so that then the princess she came and she ran to 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 cover over his finger, in other words to buy the bandage his finger. The Rasa Sham Eben Tob and she saw underneath the cut that there was this there was a a jewel. The Niskan abode Ma'od, she became tremendous, tremendously jealous of him. So she made herself prepared to be sick. And all kinds of doctors came. But they couldn't make any kind of, they couldn't cure her. So they called for witches. And there was one particular witch. The Gilsa Aloha Emma's and she revealed to him the truth that she was faking it. She he also said that she was making herself sick. So she asked him, Im Yukula Asos Kishuf, if you could make some kind of a spell, La Adam Shihiya Mitsura, that the man should become a, a leper. In other words, it would take away all of his beauty. She said yes. Amalo, but he said she she said Maybe, 
Yivakesh Mechashev, they will seek out another witch. She Yivata will nullify her Kisha, the Yisrape, your Kisha, then he will become healed. Amacha Mechashev, so then the witch says, Im Yashlicho Akishav El Hamayim, but if you throw the spell into the water, Lo Yuchlo Levatlo Od, you will never be able to nullify it again. But also, okay, so she went on, she did this. And she threw the spell into the water. And the, 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 the prince immediately started to become a Metzor, a leper. Nobody wanted to get near him. There was a leprosy on his face, on his nose and all the rest of his body. So the Melek went and he got he, he he went to get doctors. And he also got wizards and witches. But it didn't help at all. So now we think, oh wait a minute. So he made a gazera on the Jews, she is Paul, they should pray. So they started looking for that tzaddik. And they found him and they brought him to the king. And the tzaddik himself was continuously praying. Why was he praying? Because when he was promised, he promised this. That the son of the king, the prince, would be made completely and totally out of precious jewel. But it didn't come out like that. And he was claiming to Hashem, his brother, pleading. Did I do this for my honor? I only did it because of, of, of your glory, your honor. But now you haven't fulfilled like I said it would be. So the tzaddik was now came for the king. And he played for the child. But it didn't help. But he did say to the king that this is witchcraft. So the tzaddik Now this tzaddik he was higher in terms of his power to be able to work miracles or work spells than all of the rest of the wizards. And then the tzaddik said, he came to the, to the king and he let him know that this is witchcraft. And they sent, they threw the spell into the water. And so there would be no cure for the ben melech unless you throw the wizard himself, the mime, you throw him into the water. Amr HaMelech, so the Melech says, I will give you all, all of the witches in my land, the mime, and throw them all into the water, Kadesh Yitzrafi Bani. Benis Yarek HaBas Melech, the Bas Melech saw this happening, and she became afraid. And she ran to the water, in order to take out the kishuf, because she knew by herself, she knew exactly where the kishuf was. And she fell in to the water. It was a tremendous commotion. Shabbas Melech Nafloch of Hamayim, the the princess fell into the water. Ba Osa Ratzadik, and the Tzadik came. Ba Hamelachem, and he said to them, Shah Ben Melech Yisrape, so now the Ben Melech will be healed. Ben Yisrape, and he was healed. Ben Yisyab Shachat Saras, and they dried up the plague, the leprosy. Ben Nafal fell to fell, the Niklaf and scaled off of him. Call the or all of his skin. And they saw from this that all of the skin and all the outside had been now underneath it had been all along and he had as a result of that 
all of the treasure treasure from these beautiful stones. So now explaining this, he says like this Hainu ki achasha nikla faor that after the was peeled off the skin, Aznizgala it was revealed then ben Melech that the the prince who Kulubarabonim Tovas were completely made out of precious gems, Kesha Amachat Sadik Hanal, just like the Tzadik says. Now that's the second edition of this story. That's really the end of this story. It's a very short story. But it's in my hope that we'll be able to look at the Pirish of Rabbi Lozer Shlomo Shik as we go through this and see what the secret of this story really is coming to tell us.